that I will do all the exam problem solutions. All of them. All of them. Oh, you can't take it back. All, I said, not all. All. At 2 o'clock Tuesday, okay? And Jimmy 237 should be available as far as we check. I asked to reserve the room anyway. So we should have that. Time. Also, I want to emphasize you need today's lecture for the homework, and I hope you saw my email. And John, you are clear. They have <coughs> to turn it in 7.30 p.m. And if you can post solutions as close to 8 p.m. as you can, I think you have to collect the home so you can look, if you have any doubts, etc. Okay? I can't do that. It's 7.30 p.m. tomorrow, right? Yes. Okay. In John's mailbox. His mailbox is across from your mailboxes. <laughs> okay? Check with his last name, and you'll find his medics. All right. For the exam, you are allowed four pages of handwritten notes. I haven't completely made the exam, but at this point, I'm thinking that there will be a computer. So you need to have your laptops. I'll bring power strips. Okay, that's the one time I'm going to bring my bag of power strips. And the way we're going to do it, we're probably going to do the computer part first, and then you're going to get the pen and paper part. Okay? Any questions about it? The time, how much time for each? Well, uh, half and half? No, it's not half and half. The computer part is a lot shorter. Typically, computer part is like one fifth, one fourth to one fifth of the exam. Again, I haven't made, but you can see examples of all computer part exams in what I have already posted. Okay. But, I mean, what things have we done that involve computer? About everything. Look down. It's finding nominal steady state. We find finding the matrix A, B, C transpose gamma. We have found how to do partial fraction expansion efficiently, right? Have done all those things. And you can also, I can also ask you to do something by hand and plot it on the computer. Okay? So you should know how to plot from Excel. Wait, I don't know. You don't know how to plot from Excel? I know how to do it from like, like very badly but on paint. I can hit you with some paint stuff. You select the two columns and you plot them. Insert plot. Okay, you're not in the face class, so you haven't done it there. All right, I guess I want to plot it. Okay. All right, so also today's material absolutely is in the exam and you need it for doing your homework. <coughs> I pointed out some short part of your homework needs today's lecture, particularly the qualitative response curve. So we continue now with given a transfer function and changes in the input that is pertaining to that transfer function. So if I have a GU, what happens if you change? If I have a GDI, what happens if the I change? So
you have a variable t as a transfer function, and you have some change in the input for that transfer function. So z is u or a disturbance. If it's u, that part should be to u. If it's a disturbance, it should be to the i for that disturbance. Crystal clear, everyone? So, so there are several things we can tell. And so I'm continuing. First of all, let me summarize what we covered last time. So the first thing we covered was stability. the transfer function. Not of y prime bar, but of the transfer function. So any denominator roots of z prime bar are not whole. Only denominator roots of gz of the transfer function are whole. So if even one pole has positive real part, actually or zero, even zero real part actually If a pole is positive, it blows up exponentially. If the pole is zero, it blows up linear. Okay? So it blows up if it's one pole is positive or zero. If all poles the origin is a result of step change blows up. Okay? You had, I guess you didn't do yet any response curve for the one you had in the homework. But the one I gave you in the homework, first homework or second, third homework, you had a pole at zero. So that's an open loop, that's not an open loop stable system. Because what will happen is if you have a step change, the level of your tank would either empty or overflow. Oh, okay. And that's the instability there. Of course, the linear model blows up, I mean, is invalid, far from the point of linearization. And what happens then, instead of going to infinity, the model stops being valid once the height becomes zero, or once it starts overflow. Then the model is no longer valid. If the model was valid, it will be going towards minus infinity or plus infinity. But in reality, the tank either empties or overflows, which means the model description is no longer valid. All right. Second, we talked about the new steady state. And when we have a new steady state, it's stable, right?
and using final value theorem, FVT stands for final value theorem, from y prime bar equals g of s u prime bar plus sum of g di of s di prime bar follows that y prime at infinity, which is the new steady state value, would equal, would equal okay, g of 0, new steady state value of the input, plus sum of g di of 0, new steady state value of the disturbance. And of course, if the only input that changes is z, z being u or a disturbance, all other input deviations are zero. So, I'm sure I said it last time, nearly. <laughs> no, you ask me questions off topic. That's what funny. And I did. <laughs> if I'm going too fast, one, just uh, slow down. OK, we know that give that's that approximate linear system, the transfer function model. And I'm checking what happens if only one input changes from the nominal steady state. That means all other deviations are zero. So the only term of those, the only prime of the input that is different than zero is the one that changed. That's what I'm calling z here. OK? So since all other primes are zero, all other terms become zero except the one that's associated with the input that changes. So that's why this becomes g0, 0, z prime. So that would give us always the new steady state value. Assuming stability. Clear? So, and remember I also talked about what would be the long way of doing it. The long way of doing it would have been to invert y prime bar equals g0 of s z prime bar using partial fractions expansion in the dictionary. You get y prime of t. And how do you find the new steady state value, y prime infinity? Take the limit as t goes to infinity. A lot more work than simply putting 0 where you have s and multiplying it by the new steady state value of the input deviation. Okay. All right, and what we stopped last time is the third thing. We're talking about oscillations. And there are two issues here. First of all, when do we really have oscillations? And the answer is very simple. If I have even one complex conjugate a uh, pair, uh, pair of, of poles, I have mathematical oscillation. So,
If I have complex quantitative pair, I have mathematical solutions. However, most of the time, they are not going to be observable. Let me say three. Same in the graph as if this didn't exist. So this is a case where you have mathematical oscillations, but they're not observable. For the oscillations to be observable, we need two conditions. Largest real part. Yeah, I'll, let me write largest real part, then I'll explain the graph. 